everybody <laughs> to another episode of the DNVR Rapids podcast. I'm your host, Mitchell Carroll, a.k.a. Merchel, a.k.a. We didn't get hailed on, baby. <laughs> Woo! It is a interesting weather day down here in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we all just mad scrambled our cars over to the tattered cover parking garage to hide out for 20 minutes. Uh, for nothing. Paid $2 for peace of mind. Uh, that's how it goes. We got a big, 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 big show for you guys. And that means I have to get our panel introduced here. As usual, it is Super Yaya. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm super sad, yeah, yeah. Super sad, yeah, yeah? Yeah. I hate the weather. Uh, Rapids 1 isn't winning. But thankfully, I got Crookham here to help me well i haven't got day. that far yet because we still got to introduce our guy downtown Dwayne brown <laughs> over here. Wow. Wow. <laughs> i want crook <laughs> how are you doing bud i i was the uh car at the parking deck when they said it was full <laughs> so i had to turn around and come back uh, so I'm doing great i'm doing real great yeah my, but nothing happened my Didn't car's help. enjoying the weather yeah um yeah, it's great. Everything's real great. You know what is great? <laughs> Our guest today here on the DNVR Rapids podcast, you know him as the general manager of Rapids 2, the color commentator for Rapids senior team radio broadcasts. He's had every title you can imagine in the soccer world. It is Brian Crookham. Welcome back to the show. Well, I'm glad to be here, and hopefully I can make super yaya and wait, wait, honestly, super whiny yaya today. <laughs> I just want to make his day a little bit better, so that's my whole goal today. Wow. Now I'm really sad because I have a really good nickname for super Crookham. Super whiny yaya is yeah. awesome. And now I'm really sad because I, I had a really cool name for Crookham. Now I'm not going to say it. I know it, so I'll use it. I'm going to say yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So I got no, you. you guys didn't take the nickname I said. <laughs> I got you. I, got I created you. the nickname. All right, All right let's what? see. We got, a, we got a, just a mess of things to, d- to dig into, but first, how are you? It's been a while since you've been on the show. I'm great. I'm great. I've dried off since I walked in. <laughs> <laughs> I expected parking out front for me, you know, but it didn't happen. Velvet so, rope man. style. Yeah, yeah. while I was trying to feed the meter, <laughs> I got a little wet. But no, everything's good. Good. Everything's good. Good, good. good. Well, we're obviously going to dive into uh, some senior team news. We got a little game to play at the end. But you can't have Crookham on if we're not going to talk about Rapids 2, which... If you are following this organization, if you're into MLS Next Pro, you already know. uh, Rapids, do you having the best MLS Next Pro season of all time? Potentially? I mean, you got biggest goal differential. You got Yusuke Hanya. You got Ali LaRaz. You got uh, Remy Cabral. You got 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 a parent trap situation. You got Marlon Vargas. You got Chacon. You got. Tell us or the people, because we know. If if they're tuning in for the first time to Rapids Two, what what's kind of the 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 hmm, theme's not the right word, but what's the story of this team like so far this season? What what is the theme? Isn't the right word of the season? What am I looking for here? I think you're just it's looking a story. For, yeah, the yeah, story. What's the story? Oh, the story yeah. story's easier. It's it, it's the players that have been put on the field, and it's the staff that's been able to, you know, on a weekly basis, assemble them into a into a spot that they uh, can compete at a very high level every week. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, when we look at the mix of players that we have in that, we've got guys all the way from 17-year-old academy players that are that are performing at an elite level um, to first-team guys that are coming in and need some minutes so they can get cleaned up before they go contribute at the first-team level. And, and then a, a really, really nice core group of players that are – uh, signed to Rapids 2 contracts that really give us the glue that everything sticks to. So on a daily basis, we may have players move up or we may have players move down, but that core um, has been something that we can count on every single day. It's not even every single week because the, the picture changes every day. And then the, the staff that uh, works with the first team staff, second team staff, and and the academy staff to ensure that the training environment's right every day, the mix of players is right every day, and uh, they can perform at an optimal level every time they step on the field. And I think we've been, you know, when when you get good people in, in the same spot, you you create your own luck. And I, I think we've been very fortunate to uh, work in an environment that's productive right now. Uh, do you have one? Yeah, I'll just I feel like I ask. jumped over you there. Kind of just. Um, you're talking about the core of the team. It didn't change much from last year. 
What's the biggest difference in the biggest gen from last year to this year? Was it just players taking steps? Was it like because you did have Hanya and Marlon Vargas who were like two kind of star players from last year's team, but this year they just kind of taken off to the point they even wrapped like the first team was calling them up for spot minutes. Yeah, I think you know I think we get when you talk about this team. Uh, I keep having conversations with people about well, last year wasn't good and this year is. And if you look at this group and, and Kenzie's here, who pulls all the stats together for us. But you know, if you look at this group from a year ago this week, the international break this week to now, 25 games, they've only lost four games in those 25. Yep. So it wasn't like it just started right. a, this yeah. spring. It's something that started as the season progressed, as we got guys together. Now, your question's great. And that core has come together and has been seasoned. We've got guys, all the guys that have been called up have already been named. Guys like Blake Malone, who have been an absolute rock in this group that, again, you can rely on every single day to make sure that the training environment is right, that it's competitive. And then when the coaching staff then puts the information in there, they're able to take that on and continue to move forward. So I think the biggest difference is a little bit more experience. We have signed a couple more players to Rapids two contracts this year and given it a little bit more depth. We've had more time to get all the planning exactly, mm -hmm. you know, the way we want it. Um, but I, I think, you know, the biggest the biggest thing is we've got total cohesion throughout the organization. That's from Robin Frazier's staff uh, down through Chris Cartledge's staff at, at the academy. Everybody's working together every single day to get it right. And, you know, I think it's just kind of come together. Last time you were on the show, I don't even know if next – the next, the first next pro season hadn't even started yet, or maybe it was I think very it early. I think Yaya yeah, right. was asking me what was going wrong, and yeah, you know, sure, why, but it was why, it was a very why young. Can you guys not win a game? Was, you know, <laughs> so, so, I was yeah, yeah, putting so, your feet to so, the fire, yeah, dude. Exactly. Uh, you better come straight when you come on to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Got no problem with that. <laughs> um, it was a, it's a whole, it was a whole new system. It was a whole new league, whole new parameters. How much of the newness is gone? Like, I mean, in terms of operating it within league structure and no, that's an academy we, structure. We said it, I think, on this podcast probably last year. You know, we were in a situation where we were pretty much building the airplane while we were flying right. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's and, such a good point. And, and, I love that. And we were literally putting pieces together, staff together, processes in place because of the timing of the announcement of the league. The, our ability to get through things like budget processes and just literally HR processes to get people here and um, and to assemble a roster, essentially from November onward last year, it was it, or now 18 months ago, it was a it was a pretty quick transition. And so last year we felt like we were always documenting and putting processes in place as we had to get through them. And I think this year. The things that we were able to learn, we spent a week as a staff, the second the season was over, broke down literally every piece of what we do every day and tried to figure out how we could make things better and make sure that we had a process for it, come back, put that together. So where I was kind of in the forefront a lot last year with a lot of the operational stuff, now the people that run their, their pieces of the, of the organization run it, they run it well, and I just have to sit back and smile um, and watch these guys progress and really do the evaluation piece of things. So the, the difference is that we're, we're now into a rhythm and, and, and what we do on a daily and what we do on a weekly basis is um, it's functional now, you know, and, right. and we're not we're not creating the process as we go through it. We're now refining things and, and, and moving forward in, in what I think has become a pretty efficient manner. Uh I want to dig into some of the players, some of the guys, and, and we've already mentioned him a couple times, but uh, Isoke Hanya, uh, the Japanese kid, has 11 goal involvements, 9 goals, 2 assists, most goals in the league, tied for first in, in total goal involvements. Um, he is featured now with the first team twice. One was, you almost can't call one of them an appearance. Yeah. It was like 89th minute or something yep. like that, a sub on, but... Um, go go find Tiago Almeida <laughs> in your last couple minutes. Yeah, hey, go. Yeah, go. <laughs> Welcome to my last kid. Yeah. Uh, I remember that. But it feels like the stock for or for Yos is just, it's straight up right now. Yeah. What have what what is the difference last year to this year with, with Hanya? Well, I think we saw from day one with us what he had from a potential standpoint. He's a... He's incredibly focused on one goal, and that's playing for our first team. When he got to Denver, he, um, his lifestyle 
the way he carries himself off the field, the way he wakes up in the morning, attends training, takes care of himself after, that what he does on a daily basis to give himself the best possible shot to be a Colorado Rapids first team player, it, it's an, it's incredible the focus that he has on that goal. And so I think like we talked about with the team in general, for him, when you do that day in and day out, when you work, and when, literally if you just show up to work every day and say, I'm going to be better today than I was yesterday, there's days you might fall short of that. But in the end, if you do that every day, right. you're going to make progress. And this is, this is exactly his personality. And I think he's been in very good spots with our team where he can be productive. He's got productive players around him. And so that environment brings out kind of his, his top qualities. But when it gets tough, and, and we've had a couple this year, even in the, in the middle of a, well, we went 12 unbeaten, and not every one of those were pretty. Sometimes it was somebody digging something out, and it was Yosuke finding a way to, to get a goal out of, out of not a whole lot being created. And so, um, you know, I, the biggest thing for him is just his desire to be successful. And it's, it's fun to be around every day. Um, He's not going to come on the podcast and tell a lot of jokes to you. He's he's Man. going to go home and rest and and hang out and uh, you know, absolutely love him and and he's been a model of kind of what we want in the program as far as come in, do your work, and really have a bigger goal in mind. So kind of with that with Hanya and how great he's been and he's kind of made a name himself for this league. Yeah. Um, this is going to be weird and you don't have to answer, but <laughs> and it's not that weird because I know it's a little bit more private, private information. I would expect nothing less. <laughs> that's, I'm here for the weird factor. Like that's a, uh, you're accomplishing so, that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Hanya, being such a great player, what kind of interest has he garnered around the league or even around the world from other teams? You know, we, we haven't talked much about, you know, things outside the league. Our, our focus is on how he can progress within our system. And, and like I said... Even from him as an individual, um, we're trying to set up uh, situations where we can help him be in the best possible situation to become a, a, a Colorado Rapids first team player. And I'll leave it at, at, kind of at that uh, as far as where we are on those things. Um, our focus right now is, is um, how far can we progress him in our system? When can he hopefully someday become a contributor to us win an MLS Cup with the Colorado Rapids. And I think part of my question comes that from that comes from um, what kind of scouting is there in MLS Pro, uh, Next Pro? It's a pretty new league. I barely started last year. You guys were one of the founding clubs, again, like that. Were, so I was just more wondering, like, what kind of scouting do you have around the league? What kind of scouting do you have another from other leagues going to go see talent in that league? That's a good question. Yeah, so we, we do um, – a ton of preparation for every match. Now we only play in the Western Conference with Next Pro, okay. but we will be intimately familiar with every opponent. Mm -hmm. So we'll know we've got a full-time video analyst who spends. We and, and this is one of the things that I think gives us so much co cohesion in that group. Even when players move, we have an entire video catalog, and and, and Eric Boucher, head coach, Matt Gordon, our video analyst, work with the entire staff to pull things together. They're constantly showing players. So to go back to your question, when we look at players within our league, we know those guys inside now because we have mm -hmm. all the video we have. We can pull that at any stage. From a scouting standpoint, this is part of the bigger picture for us. So when we mm -hmm. look at scouting, we almost see our roster as the 31 first-team players, the 11 guys that we're going to sign to the Rapids 2 contracts, and then you know the, the next 50 guys that are in the academy – all having a place on the depth chart somewhere. So when we take it that way, whether it's our youth scouts, whether it's our first team scouts, whether it's myself going out and looking at players, um, every event that we're at, we're looking at it with that perspective of somewhere within the system. Do we have players that are blocking? You know, if we brought in, you know, a seventh right back, you know, does that do us any good? Because there's actually mm -hmm. not a pathway to that. So we're evaluating pathways. We then look at players that we see with our eyeballs. We get sent from agents. You know, it, it's the scouting network doesn't change necessarily from what we're doing at the first team level, second team level, even at the academy level now. What about yeah. scouts from other organizations? Do you see them showing up to DU Stadium on game day? Do you see 
Are they coming by practice? Are you seeing like outside? Are you getting eyes from outside the MLS Next Pro world? Because so much is on video, sure. a lot of that is done, especially at second team level, a lot of that's done on video. We do have national team scouts. Um, sure. We've had, I can tell you the last three games at DU, I, each of those last three games, I know we've had a, a scout from U.S. Soccer there. Wow. We will occasionally cool. have scouts from other federations, as you know. Robinson. Danny, Danny Chacon and, and yeah. Robinson Aguirre are both internationals at the senior level. Um, with Grant other, Beaudry, Beaudry with, was with other with the young team, clubs, yeah. yep, absolutely. The the youth national teams. Um, it, Adam's been certainly well represented there. Um, you know, la- last year when Yaps was playing with us um, a, a lot, we we saw guys out to watch there. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, we're always managing those relationships, and and sometimes it's in person, and sometimes it's. Um, video and, and phone calls and things like that, but there's nobody can hide right now. Um, it, it, everybody is on a stage. It, it, sometimes you don't realize that as a player is that everything you do positive and everything you do negative is memorialized right now on video. And uh, uh, you can check up, up on somebody and you can check up on those guys that send you a resume and says, well, I played 25 games for the uh, age of the right, internet, the right. age of video. You can't lie anymore. You know, sure, you, sure. you, you play 25 games, but only like 30 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Or, or or did you? You yeah. know, and, and, and so um, it, it makes it a lot more efficient for our process as well. Dwayne, you're kind of quiet down there. What are you thinking about R2 over there? Well, I'm thinking more bigger. So. All right. Well, then I have a question I, yeah, before keep, you do keep that. Going, keep <laughs> going. Keep going. Keep going. Individual uh, players and, and couple, let's get, couple get through Couple Denver those. names. Yeah, Ali Laraz, who's yep. had a pretty nice season coming off of a big injury Massive. um what have you seen from him in training slash games in terms of obviously his trajectory is his first team mls minutes but what have you seen in that ramp up to get back to that well uh, ollie was a, a a real a player that was really in the mix with our first team probably 18 months ago you go a little bit further back than that and then ollie had a devastating injury he had a yeah. serious injury when we he got hurt at du in a match and he was essentially out for, for last season. And that is not easy on a developing player. No. What he has done to turn his focus and say, you know what? It's not about anything except for me coming back, doing the rehab first, then getting my opportunity to get in. And it's easy to say, well, I wanna, I've, I've played for our first team. I want to go out somewhere else. I want to do something. He's, he has been in this group, and I think that – he was getting his legs back at the beginning of the year, and I think he's then turned into somebody who's not only contributed from the soccer standpoint, but he's also contributed from a leadership standpoint because he sure. has been there and seen that. And so when you look at guys that, you know, I, I mentioned a guy like Blake Malone who's not going to be on the stat sheet every day. Ollie's probably not on the stat sheet every day, but what he does for us in the mix of this team is very important. And so, you know, I think I think we've probably seen as much or more from Ollie as we could have expected to this point, given the time that he was out and the way he's approached his uh, his return has been great. And then the other Denver guy, Adam Beaudry, who has featured with the U.S. Youth National Team. Uh, it, what was the last tournament? It was the CONCACAF Championships? Yeah, they won. Uh, under 17s? In the 17s, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, And so he was rotating in that, in that keeper rotation. Um, I've been able to watch him kind of train off to the side at practice with the first team and, and – um, I guess kind of he's in the, it's a name in the pipeline. I think everyone's kind of aware that Beaudry exists. Yeah. Probably most people haven't been able to see him play or feels a lot like the no. next Yappy a little bit kinda, like right. kind of so, one of those guys that has like a bigger name in the pipeline. Yeah. What but are not the Cliff just notes? in Rapids. Well, the Cliff Notes are first of all, he's he's a a metro area guy who started out at Real Colorado and and really started to shine. We were uh, able to work with their club and and he came in. I personally believe we have the best goalkeeper coach in the country, and in, in Chris Sharp, um, that works as our director of goalkeeping, um, and works with Brandon Bumpus, who who really deals with Adam on a daily basis. Um, but Adam, when he came in as a youth player into our academy, he was immediately starting to get looks around. You mentioned on the side, around our first team, around training, and then you get him in the goal, and then you get. And then you realize, you know, just what he's doing. And then as this, as the spring progressed, we looked at Adam and said, like, he's going to have to get games with the second team um, as we go. And, you know, unfortunately, Abe Rodriguez suffered injury 
And sometimes you're just waiting for that door to open or whatever happens, the door opens. And, and that was that it was Adam's cue to get thrown in, quite frankly, and said, go. And Adam's come in and been um, he progresses every single day and just keeps stepping up the ladder. Athletically, he's going he, he's got an MLS uh, or, or beyond athleticism, sees the game, reads the game very well. Good shot stopper. He's been really calm and able to play with his feet. We want to play. And uh, we want to be able to play through our goalkeeper. And he's proven in tough moments, on the road, under pressure, um, that he can, he can handle both sides of the ball and, and both sides of the game. And, and, and even the game management part of, of, of uh, trying to help a team win right. when, when you're managing out things. So he, you know, making good decisions to help you get there. So those, those little maturity points that you're already starting to see from him get you pretty excited about a future. So, kind of just real quick with Brodry, I'm a um, big fan of him. Every, he, again, he kind of has his names are in circles around another club, see the U.S. team and stuff like that. I've heard some comparisons and I've thought about it as well of like Slonina that he might take that next step really quickly because he has that kind of production, kind of has that skill set. What has that done for his? Um, how has he handled the pressure more than anything? Really well. He he shows up every day and trains and you know. There are, we've had players, we've seen players, we know of players that they get that reputation. They read too much on the internet. They mm -hmm. find out, wow, I must be good. And, and they act like <laughs> Looking that. Looking at their own and transfer market profile. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, when you start appearing in video games and you start it, like, it, it affects you. Of course. Of course. You know, and, yeah. and, and, you know, I think <laughs> we've been really fortunate that I think we've got a really grounded group of people. Again, that core of people that surround these you know, won't let guys get away with that. And it hasn't been a problem at all it, with, with a guy like Adam. He comes in and, and he does his work. And, sure. and um, you know, I just don't think, I don't think he sees it as pressure. I think he sees it as process. And, you know, if we can keep guys to that, uh, to that part, even if somebody's yelling at you, even if you're taking, taking crosses under pressure to secure a game in something that, that helps a, a, an unbeaten streak go, you know, it's just part of his job right now, and I think that's that's a really fun part to see. I got one more question. We're gonna let Dwayne Cook over there after that. But right. um, <laughs> Podry is seventeen. Yeah, seventeen years old. But in this league, it's not just he's not just playing seventeen, eighteen year olds, right? You have Absolutely the Gerst backs of the world. You have guys who are fighting for their own spot. Uh, on their first teams that are playing down. Well, I mean, it's we played against a couple of DPs last year in this league that were right. either needing time sure. or were on the outs with their group. Mm. These are real pros, right? And so he's stepping in when Abe gets hurt, and all of a sudden, this kid who I mean, granted, going and playing Concacaf championships, going and doing these things, it, it's benchmarks that we can now see as soccer fans in 2023 that maybe we couldn't beforehand. You know, so it's not like he's not used to big time moments or tournaments or games, but still, I mean. When you're playing at the under 17s, you're playing a bunch of under 17s, right? You're not right. playing guys who have played in Ligue 1 or in MLS or in Liga MX. So, um, in terms of that level of competition and training, I mean, it has to just be an immense benefit to have a kid like him be able to step in and hang and excel. Absolutely. And we're going to push these guys kind of that edge of where um, they could fail. Sure. They, you know, and, and but we've got to be in a place where we can bring them back off that edge a little bit when we need to, and we can build them back into whatever, and then we're going to try it again. We're, we're not, we're, we're going to ensure that failure isn't fatal for them, but we're going to push them to that point where we know that they can handle it or, or maybe just past the point they can handle, and then we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll ride that edge as much as we can. In player development, if we don't push them there, you mentioned if he just plays with the 17s every it's really important that our our team is sits between the first team and the 17s it's just not a glorified under 18 team or something right. yeah. we've got senior players in that group and by the way senior players that are fighting for their lives and fighting for their families also have Adam catching a soccer ball behind them to secure their futures yeah. right. so right. those pressures as well playing with men whose lives and livelihoods depend on it that that's big too. That's the great. Remy's, the Gersh Box, all those guys that like these results Remy. matter a lot to yeah, yeah. We're big Remy guys. We're big yeah. Remy guys over here. I like a I like a Remy myself. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of Remy, but well, I like hey. both. Uh, <laughs> join, go ahead, man. So let's let's hear we you. We talk a lot about, you know, the individual players and, and some that are standing out and 
all the numbers and stats and stuff. But one of the things I notice about Rapids 2 this year is they're fun to watch. And when a goal is scored, I mean, a goal is scored anywhere in any league, we celebrate. But there's just something different about R2 celebrations. Like, <laughs> that's something that's just very sincere and heartfelt. So it's like, in addition to being good and top of the league, like, what is the glue that you see holding this group of players together like that, that really just just makes R2 what they are this year? Yeah, I, I think, well, obviously the, the environment that the staff's creating every day, because this isn't easy with a second team, because there's so much movement in and out. Literally sure. every single day, the roster makeup is different. It, it, it will Tuesday will not be the same day as Wednesday sure. from, a, from a player availability standpoint. Last night... You got to remember, we didn't get to train with the first team, right? They had no activity. So today's training session, instead of being a regen with the first team, was actually a real training session. And the players that we thought were going to be available for the weekend might not be, which means it changes the whole mix of what they need and the numbers that they need in the morning, which changes the second team. So there's players going in and out. So to your point, the culture that's created by the staff and the culture that's created by those anchor players, the guys in the seg- I think I think the um, character of the guys that we have that are on second team contracts has to be exceptional because they are the glue that we stick people to when they come up from the academy, when they come down from, because it's not easy being a first team player and sure. being told, you know what, it's Thursday, we don't see you involved on the weekend, I want you to go to R2. Well, you can either put your head down and go, oh, this is going to suck. Or you go, this is an opportunity to get Sweet, better get with some guys yeah. that are yeah. that are going to push me still. Give me 90, yeah. And I think, I think the, that earning that trust of the guys on both sides of that is, has been key. So when you see it all come together on Saturday and you score a goal, and you score a goal because you're bold and you're – uh, you guys have heard this a thousand times from our front office about what we want to be as a club. Right now, I think the second team, in the way they approach matches with the ball, in the way they approach matches without the ball, and how tuned they tuned in they are in the transitional pieces, knowing what they want to achieve in, in, in those transitional moments, I think that when you have a clear picture of what you want to be, and then you go execute it, and you execute it with guys you actually like and respect, <laughs> then all of a sudden you go, when the ball goes in the back of the net, that's a reward for all of us. I got goosebumps. For I, like, sure. like, yeah. like working with this group, and I, I know I every, occasionally will throw something on Twitter or whatever. The first couple of games of this year, if you look back, <laughs> I'm like, this group is special. And it was with draws. It was with... You know, just where they fought back with something didn't quite go right. Sure. But they'll fight for each other. And it doesn't matter who each other is. The guy that they right, hung because the jer- it's not the same they, every time. They, they hung a jersey here next to me. I better fight for that guy, too. Sure. What It doesn't matter what the name on the back of that is. And when you get to that place culturally, you're doing something. And the yeah. environment raises everybody. And so that's that's probably the thing we're most excited about uh, right now. I, I'm I got chills. It, yeah, it really I mean, do. it shows. I mean, the thing is, and, and the cool thing about this year is that there's more access to watching Rapids too. Yeah, you know, I mean. so you know, as, as fans, you know, and 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 guys who cover the team and wherever it is that you're watching it from, whatever perspective, like there, it's like you said at the beginning of the season, you could feel something special, and it's like there is something about this group of players whichever group is on the field, you know, yeah. f- for that match, uh, that, that is, it, it's different. Like it, it's, 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 it's fun to watch, but also feels good. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a nice feel good about it, which is, which is a nice bonus, you yeah. know? No, it's, so. uh, I, we appreciate that. I mean, it's, you know, it's great to hear that that resonates, you know, outside of our locker room. For sure. It translates for sure through the yeah. TV. Uh, I think we're going to keep going on Rapids 2 stuff for the next few minutes. We might, have to push some of the senior team stuff to post game on Saturday. Uh, but real quick, we have to talk about our friends at Shady Rays. Shady. Sh- sh- it's not the brightest out there right now because <laughs> of those gnarly storm clouds. But earlier, you if you were driving in, you might want to have your Shady Rays on, right? It's right not here. confirmed, but Shady Rays might help against the hail. Not Whoa. confirmed. Not confirmed. Not and scientific whatsoever. But if they do <laughs> the, the fail, the Rapids does if they not. Do, if they do fail versus <laughs> baseball size hail, 
There's a great thing about Shady Rays. Yeah, they will. Ooh, replace. Wow. God, Dwayne, you're really good at this, dude. <laughs> um, if you lose or break your pair, even on day one, thanks to their lost and broken replacements, they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. You can take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades. Not just polarized shades. Because we don't mess with just normal polarized shades. Not at DMVR. No. No. Premium only. Those are the kind that like make colors look different too. Yeah. Like if you look into a light, sure. like deflects <laughs> it a little bit. Like I've done it a couple of times and I, I really, get a little tricked out. It's like, a safe, I really yeah, tried to go without It's a I safe no legal yeah. way like, to make <laughs> colors no, like, look different. It, it does make it like I'm not gonna lie. There's been times I wear them and I'm like, this looks a little bit odd, but I know it's helping my eyes. It's like blue blocker stuff. Yeah, Remember exactly. Those? Yeah, yeah, yeah there blue we blockers go. are cool. Okay. Uh, Shady Rays is an independent. <laughs> I'm company. not interrupting the ad here. I just I'm just picturing the the Shady Rays test on the side. Sidewalk with Yaya having <laughs> ba- baseball size hail coming onto his noggin here. Yo, I'm trying to do it for science. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look, we're uh, respected journalists here. Uh, Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world class product that is just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. Uh, we already talked about the lost and broken replacements, but it really is the best deal in eyewear. Make sure you take advantage. Uh, together with their customers, Shady Rays is providing much needed support to nonprofit partners across the U.S. through Shady Rays Impact. From building play sets for pediatric cancer patients, that's some that's some good karma points right there, uh, to providing young adults with MS the outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Also sounds pretty tight. Yeah. Outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Shady Rays is making an impact in your community and others like it now and for years to come. You can shop the entire collection at the brand new location at Park Meadows Mall. It is the full stop shop for all things Shady Rays. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. No risk when you shop. Team always has your back. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out the best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com. Use code DNVR. And you get 50% off when you buy two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Okay. You pulled up some players I saw on your phone there. Do you have? More, do you want to keep going in on the roster? Because my kind of question with the roster is we all kind of know the names, right? We know Hanyas. We know so the Ali Marazes. We know the Beaudry's. That's kind of my question. Who's the next guy yeah, we should know about? Who's the guy that we have to keep an eye out? I'm not naming favorite kids in this no, podcast. No, 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 no. That, no, no. That's what you're asking me. I'm, I'm so I'm, sorry. I'm, like, I, I told them, yeah. like, let's not. Look, I don't have kids, do so I don't right. know that struggle. But you need to name your favorite. You did kids. not say anything about that. Don't 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 go. Oh, no, if it's me. my personal kids, I'll name my favorite. <laughs> one of them. I have no problem. Well, your rapids baby. Professionally, get away. no, yeah. I can't. I can't name. Let's keep no, it listen, personal. We, who's your favorite child? My my favorite child. Yeah. Ooh, what day is today? <laughs> it is Thursday. <laughs> okay. It is July. If that changes anything. Well, my June. twin. My twins June. were doing a birthday dinner tonight for Sean and Beth. Happy birthday! Wow. Team. But happy birthday, birthday to the chat. Miles yep. off. Yep. Um, so happy birthday to them. Um, so they're both my favorite kids. They're twins, so I'm not going to pick on that. Okay. I'm nice, just going to sit nice. on the fence this whole question. Sure. And I brought time. it up, which is <laughs> yeah. You weird. did it to yourself. Yeah, you, did, you did this to <laughs> yeah. yourself. We tried to do it professionally, yeah. and you just. But yeah, did you notice that I just totally deflected your question. I mean, I'm, I was about to ask you, like, like, are you going to name See? a player? Yeah, so like, player. No, I'm not going to name. No. So if you look at our our mix right now, we've got we've got several guys. That have come out of the academy and have um, are starting to contribute there. We've got guys that are in that second team group that are that are popping out and and doing really well. And I think, like literally, I feel bad for not naming every player in this sure, roster because sure. they've all they've all contributed in some way. Um, and and we've got a couple of amateur guys that are going to head off to college this fall and things like that. There's a new crop that we'll, we're starting to integrate right now as the academy season has ended and some of them will move on, some of them will move in, um, you know, so uh, take a look at the youth national team rosters. If you want to, if you want to pick from what we got, and we've got a lot of, a lot of kids in there. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, that, that what was, a baller yeah. answer that was. He's like, dude. you know, I'm not going to pick. You can pick for me. <laughs> like, you can look at the national team roster. How cool is that, dude? <laughs> that was sick. Good, good deflection. Thanks. I, I'm well practiced at this. Pro yeah, at this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's almost like you talk for a living, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost. Yeah, yeah. Almost. <laughs> almost. Dwayne, you have more questions over there. I know it. 
So sort of related, you know, talking about the future, relating that to your past coming in through, you know, development of youth programs, going into Academy. I've got an eight year old daughter who plays, um, as academies get stronger, um, you know, MLS next pro things, things like this, that, that are now starting to develop and exist, um, both as partners of MLS or, um, NWSL, whatever it is, we're seeing more and more leagues and more and more access and opportunity, um, for young people to kind of look up and see older, but not too much older yeah. kids, you know, young adults playing soccer, like because you have this wealth of experience with Rapids, you know, going all the way, literally from youth soccer all the way up now to, you know, to Rapids one and Rapids two, what do you see the future as, you know, Good how question. is it changing and developing for youth leagues, you know, for, Kids, kids off the street, kids in Highlands Ranch, kids. No, in Aurora, that's a, it's a great, great question because I think there's a, there's several parts to it. I can go, yeah. Don't high five them yet until I answer. Oh, good point. We'll see. My part's done. It's a great. My part's done. I've handled it. It's getting a good answer. question. We, we feels graded good. two parts. The question then the answer. <laughs> if I if I could, I mean, if if you give me a second on this, I sure, will, go uh, go. go. I, I, I look at a couple of different things. I think I think when you look at it from a youth programming standpoint, so if you think about Adam and you think about the the work that he was able to do in his own community with Real Colorado, and then. When the opportunity was right, when the timing was right, when he needed more, when he needed a, a different environment, whether that be from a coaching environment or from a, a competitive environment, thing, something that's going to take him into that next level and that direct connection to a first team, then he's coming in here. So now what it does is it, it, what we also are starting to do with the professional youth programs is start to compensate the youth clubs that work with them kind of like a training compensation mm -hmm. uh, program that all of a sudden you go, well, wait a minute, if I do the best thing for the kid, it's also going to be the best thing for the club. And then, you know, those pathways open up. And, and, and so I think we're at, a, we're at a time where youth soccer in the country, and I think this is going to be true for an eight-year-old girl as well, because NWSL and some of the clubs that that are participating in now creating their own youth programming. You're mm -hmm. seeing 15, 16 year old girls being signed in there as well. This is the reality of, of when you look at it on a world market uh, of that ability. When clubs w look out for the best interest of the individual as they collectively win championships and do all of those things, then the level just keeps rising. And so there's incentive for them to look out for the best interest of the development of the individual. Um, as we start to reinvest as a league into those things. And, and, I, and I'll take that a different direction as well, because when we started the academy at the Rapids in 2007, we were developing players that we knew were going to get into the Rapids team. But you have to think about the, what the league's gonna look like when those players actually enter the mm -hmm. league. So Shane O'Neill was not developing for the, the, the league that it was in 2007. He was about to go play against Thierry Henry. We didn't know that, but what we do know, <laughs> but we knew what was going on. But what we what we also know is that now Cole Bass is going to play against Lionel Messi. Right. Yeah. So we're not thinking about what we're developing for just now. We're going to have to win a championship with homegrown players in 2030, and it's going to be a better league. It's going to be a league that challenges more than it does now. And so we have to raise the bar within that as well. And to do that, it's gotta be how we are able to contribute back to the clubs that contrib contribute to what we're doing. So trying to go from a, a world where it was actually kind of competitive against the clubs that were there from a, um, it was almost like, well, you're kind of invading our space now mm -hmm. to now getting to a place where we're collaborative. And we're all trying to work for, make sure that whatever level you're playing at, you've got a place to go and continue that. And hopefully that does wonders for the development piece of it, but also just the general participation piece. Because if your daughter decides, you know what, I wanna play three days a week as a 13 year old, 
I don't really want to play in college or I don't want to play professionally. But yep. you know what? I really like going out with my friends and playing. There's got to be a place for her to do that as well. Yep. And so we don't drive her out of the game too early by saying we're only focused on somebody that can win a state cup or somebody that can play for our, uh, the Rapids. Yep. You know, so um, we still got a long way to go to collaborate to get to that. And, and MLS clubs made a big splash in and created some divides when they came into the space. And we're just now, 15, 16 years later, getting to a point where we're building real relationships with some of these clubs that have done a tremendous job for 20 years. Um, and so I don't know if I've even answered your question there, but, <laughs> but, but I think culturally we're able to, to, to progress the to game either, itself. So. <laughs> I give it a Did I get up. any part of your thumb. question right? I don't, I don't. I, that no, reminds I, me of something I, that yeah, I used I, to say. I, 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 before working for DNVR, I was running restaurants. Actually, our friends at Legal Pete's, which I'm sure we'll talk about here in a little bit. Shout out. But when, when we're talking about internal development and, and the process of filling in positions throughout any organization, right? you have to be okay with someone who just wants to be a shift supervisor, not a general manager, not the CEO. right? Because you have those. There's all these roles to fill, and sometimes you have to be okay with knowing that sometimes you have to foster someone just enough to get to that level that they want to be at. And that's okay. And the way you're talking about, you know, we have to have a, a space where the Academy kids can come up and get tested and you have to have a place where the guys at the end of the senior team can come down and, and play competitive matches and you have to still develop your guys on your R2 contracts. And it just seems to me, and I don't think this is really just a question more of just an observation is that you guys have really kind of started to find that mix of or environment to foster that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. If you've got the pathway for players, then they're confident that if they're in the pathway, they could get there. Sure. They do their work. Hopefully we're only limiting people by the talent that they have and the motivation they have to get down that pathway. Then we create the environment around that pathway where they can come in to work every single day and feel like they can get better. And we've then got to inject the information. That's where the staff comes in. That's where our whether it be curriculum for the young ones or, or, or the, the way we look at the training sessions and individual development plans and things like that for, for the players that are progressing through. So um, it probably relates to your question as well. In the end, the methods, the, the, the methodology, that gets passed down and, and, and um, even benefits, again, players that only want to be there a couple of days a mm -hmm. week. There's zero wrong with that, by the way. That is awesome. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. And, and that's what that's what the majority of the people that are going to come come support us yeah. are going to be, are people that were exposed to it as a player. If we can make their experience a good one, no matter what level they play at, that's great. If they get cut off from the sport because they didn't feel like they had a place if they weren't the most competitive person in the world, we may never even get them in our stadium to watch our team either. So, you know, we've got to be careful about how we, what we expect out of the, um, your average player. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with being that average right. player. Not, not everybody right. is going to be a pro athlete. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very small group. It, you're so. not just I'm developing. Yeah. I mean, so we all hopes. grew up playing sports, you know, <laughs> and, it, you, and here we are sitting on couches <laughs> yeah. talking about other people. <laughs> right. Absolutely, sports, it know. does feel like you're developing fans as well as like a athletes. We hope, or yeah. we might be turning them off at times. We we know for a fact that we've had conflict in in the youth space that has either turned Ooh. staff or or you know there there have been times when it when what we haven't seen eye to eye on goals with things and we've turned people the other way. Sure. And it's our job is, sure. is to try to figure out how to how to work in an ecosystem where we're all mutually beneficial and and uh, and get it right and 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 learn when we don't get it quite right so kind of going back to like the ec ecosystem of the rapids in general how much in contact is robin frazier and eric bushy the rapids two head coach like do they work very closely because he wants certain thing from players or does he kind of like eric do his own thing and kind of like you're telling show him what to do yeah, yeah. no <laughs> I, well well, like, well it's a We've hired coaches for the Rapids, right? Yeah. Not necessarily for a team. So, so when we look at this, the the daily communication actually we've assigned somebody in our first team staff, Chris Little, assistant coach there, who is who is the constant contact with Eric, and then the constant contact at the at the youth level is Chris Cartwich. So, from a technical standpoint, those are the three main guys. Every Monday, we have a meeting that involves I think it's twenty one people now. 
but it's not just those three. And Chris Sharp is in, in every every meeting as well because he has Legend. goalkeeper um, responsibilities all the way through and is oh, very wow. involved in the daily movement. Shout out Sharp! But what happens is that group is involved every day in the movement and in more than movement decisions. But then the people that are affected by the movement, that includes the the performance guys. So that when a player moves, the data has to move with them. Because somebody may have had the day off yesterday that trains today, and somebody may have done three sessions in a row yesterday, uh, leading into today. So they might be in different places from a physical standpoint. That involves our athletic trainer. What treatment needs to move with the player? That involves the kit guy. That involves, you know, there's so many people that make this work. And I think that's probably the, the thing I'm most excited about or, or that I, I was my, – my biggest apprehension last year coming into this is – it was. We knew it was going to be great having this all in our house instead of being in Colorado Springs or Charlotte. Although we had great relationships yeah. in those places, the function that we can we can come to here is incredible. But to do that, everybody's got to be on the same page. And Robin and his staff, hundred percent on board. But I think going deeper into your question is that from a DNA standpoint, um, it's a lot easier in the second team and a lot easier in the academy actually to stick to totally on principles. Because the, the um, I don't know, the, the result on the weekend is um, the bike can be the byproduct of that for the second team. Right. The result it's on the, the weekend yeah, yeah. Um, for the first team is really important that you go out and you try to win every game regardless of, of, of how we get there. Now, we hope that as a club we've built within kind of the, the structure, the framework, the, the philosophy that we want as a club. There's going to be days when you tear up the script – and you go, look at you, and I'm beating you today, and that's it. Yeah. You know, so, so I guess the elements that you're going to see in the second team, they may, on a, on a day, on the same day, they may play out of two different shapes. But from a, a tactical standpoint, from a principle standpoint, it's going to be the same. And there's a constant dialogue about that. There's a constant, right. you know, it, that we're always talking about the same principles that get applied to the game in there. How they get applied is sometimes a little different. Yeah. By who they get applied to is obviously different. And sometimes the shape that that comes out of, or you know, maybe we're playing a back four in one group and a back three in another group, out of necessity, we might have three center backs that absolutely have to get a second team game. Mm-hmm. We may have to play three center backs. It's okay, more, yeah. so how do we apply the principles once we set that with three right, center backs? Right, so right. there's a common DNA thread throughout everything that we're doing, but the application of that is going to be the art of our coaching staff. And part of that, also, I'm guessing, also has to be how the players gel and how they get along. And it's not saying that the first team doesn't gel or get along, but it's a little bit easier when you're younger and then you have very established leaders. Like, you have your Gersh box, you have the Illiches right there. So I can see why, like, maybe the second team can get more results quicker because they do have that gel, that kind of more, uh, that youth to them that they can kind of combine with yeah. in, like, very established leaders. Totally. Yeah, I mean, I think environmentally, culturally, we, we started in a really good spot, and, and I think that, that helps, no doubt. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, that's going to wrap up our R2 portion of the discussion. Um, we're going to dive into a game here in a second. But first, <coughs> we mentioned them earlier. We got to talk about the homies at Illegal Pete's. This episode of the DNVR Rapids podcast is brought to you by Illegal Pete's. It is your go-to spot this summer. Are you ready for the longest happy hour around? Are you ready for the longest happy hour around? How yeah. long is it? Are you ready for the longest happy hour around? <laughs> I can't wait to see the outcome with it you three. It's the longest happy <laughs> hour. Five I am not walking. <laughs> hours of happiness, baby. From 3 to 8 p.m. every day at all 12 Illegal Pete's locations. That is five hours of all the usual fan favorite deals. Stop by after work. Enjoy a few extra margaritas. <laughs> That's such a crazy line. A few extra Pete's marks. A few... Not at Pete's. That's so scary. Do that before you have nothing to do. Uh, They're the best. Uh, There's no better way to kick off your summer. Don't forget to stop by Illegal Pete's on... Oh, I didn't update this copy. Wear your Nuggets gear. I'm not wearing the playoff shirt, but we did a playoff shirt with Illegal Pete's. Wear it in there. You might get yourself a free drink out of it if you buy a burrito. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. It's possible. I'm a big burrito guy. Either way, make sure... To get down to Illegal Pete's, rocking your Nuggets gear. Let's go Nuggets and bring it in. Shout out to the homies at Illegal Pete's. 
Love illegal pizza. Love it. Also love it. No, that's but you know what I love more. Very what is your? What do you love more than that? I love Mitch's Pete's tip of the week. But um, man, I'm running out of tips because we've been doing this for <laughs> a really long time. The tip is just eat illegal pizza. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm pretty sure we've talked about it on this podcast and and in these ad reads. Uh, illegal Pete's. Oh, Dev, you're right. Our homie Dev, who does the hot dogs at the C38 uh, tailgate, says we need illegal Pete's in the stadium. I agree. Ooh, we'll get man. Cook them on it immediately <laughs> right after the show. Uh, we'll get them in contact. <laughs> yeah, somehow, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> um, if you're going to a concert, if you're going to a Rockies game, if you're going to perhaps a comedy show, if you have a ticket to an event near an illegal Pete's, go to illegal Pete's first. Buy an entree that will give you a free draft beer or margarita when you show your ticket to that thing. That's a pretty good deal. Great deal. Nothing like pre-gaming a, a show with a burrito or nachos or whatever in a Pete's Mark. Doesn't get better than that. It just don't drive. Better. Just don't drive. Just don't getting, drive yeah, to the arena do after that because tequila is a thing. Um, I, okay. I can't, I can't wait to see the, the Yaya Shady <laughs> test done after the happy hour. The baseball hail test. <laughs> you should have seen after that LEMC so game. Gonna, it was really close be, to so, happening. So we're That's the that, game, actually. We're going outside little, right now. No, a little kidding. callback <laughs> to the Shady Race as well. Uh, okay, so we're, we're doing a game. Oh. Roll, roll, real quick. I want to ask. We have to go mo- so fast. No, it's so fast. And okay. Like, quirk em. After the Nuggets won the championship, was there any sense, like, any sense of urgency from the Rapids or from ownership from your guys' side? As an as a whole organization, there's a, there's a sense of urgency every single day. I sure. love that. Boom. That's all I need Boom. to hear. That's like it. that's Boom. all. That's all I wanted to hear. Like that was my only question. It, does, it, it doesn't take the Nuggets winning something for sure for, for us to have a sense to want to win. Right. It's a right. question I that I've heard people you ask, that. and I'm like, I want to make. <laughs> I kind of understand. Let me that. guarantee that's, you that every day <laughs> that we walk into that stadium. We are trying to figure out how we're going to win the next game and the next season. Love That's that. the attitude that could get you a new nickname, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. Up? And that new nickname is Brian C- Cookham. Oh, because he's cooking them. Gotcha. He, I probably don't think he does. <laughs> Brian Cookham. <laughs> Shut up, kids. As in you're cooking them. <laughs> you're killing them. You're killing them. <laughs> he's cooking the league, folks. He's cooking R2 or MLS Next Pro. Okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Brian. Okay. Him. I you love that the worst. I get, so I'm gonna get a name tag. That's awesome. <laughs> you guys, you guys are. <laughs> you need a new ID. <laughs> fully off the rails. Okay, we like to do drafts around these parts. We've done several. Uh, we figured with the general manager of Rapids Two that we would draft movie sequels, as in movie number two in a franchise, what have you. It has to be two. It cannot be three, four, <laughs> ten. If you're into the Fast and Furious. It has to be, not to say picks ahead of time, it has to be two. It doesn't have to have the number two. It does not have to have the number two. It has to be the second It has to be the second film in the series. The series. It has to be the second one. We are going to go in serpentine style. We're going to go starting with Crookham, down, back, and then down again. So it's going to be three picks. It, we'll throw it on Twitter to see who wins afterwards. Is there a statute of limitations on this? Because I don't think I've seen a movie since maybe the late 80s. That's wow. Which, by the Yo. way, is when... That's when sequels took sequels off. Sequels yes. really started um, rolling. And you know? No, so there is no statute of limitations. And is there... There's no genre limit? Cause, cause no, like, no genre. Because no, 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 no. you can't... You almost can't do a sequel that's a Correct. comedy because it's just crap. Yeah. Right. And no, no, no. There's okay. no, right, no right. holds no. barred. The only has, rule there's is one rule. No, the rules on operating. Crap! All of mine were comedies. Well, you're gonna lose. Brian so. just killed all of mine. Yeah, he did. No, no, no keep picking. No, there's yeah, two rules. All your crappy movies, <laughs> Dwayne. There's only two rules. It has to be number two, and the second one is there is no rules. Yeah, that's, that's the second the, rule. That those are the only yeah. two rules we have. It's got to be number two, and it can't be number Anything two. Anything else? Correct. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. all it is. Wow, that was good. Okay, so kicking us off, Brian Crookham. With the first pick in the sequels draft, what are you taking? Godfather. God Godfather Father two. part he took my number two. one pick. I mean, that, if you're yeah. picking anything else as the number one pick, yeah. I mean, come on, that's, I mean, that's as good as it gets. It, it's it's maybe the perfect movie. My actually might be. Or people know Godfather two more than they know Godfather one. As they should. Yeah. 
That's an excellent So I got choice. that right. You absolutely oh, nailed that. That, that is a strong a start. One. It's a strong I'll tell you, start. I've spent half of my afternoon just worried <laughs> sick about that pick. It's a strong Do not start. worry about this draft, number one. We're not, we don't take it seriously enough to worry. I got okay. real quick. Right, right, thank you. Uh, okay. My pick. I'm second. My pick. We're going to the future, but we're also going to the present. And it is Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Yeah, that's Excellent a good one. choice. Yeah. Come on, you got a motorcycle chase. You got the cool shotgun. You got, got Arnold the, Schwarzenegger. got the liquid guy. You got Melty Terminator. You got Melty Terminator guy. Melty. Strong, dude. That's a Sarah strong Connor. choice. Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor's dope. Come on. All right. <laughs> Kirkland's like, I'll give it to you. That's a, good, <laughs> that's a really good... That's, a, that's, that's another one where it's better than the first I, one. I would prefer if you referred to me as Cook'em. Cook them. Let's Cook em. go. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, legend. There it um, is. But yeah, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, as good as it gets. Bang. I am going with the classic two, Empire Strikes Back. Dang. What is your favorite part of that movie? Honestly, I'm going with the people's choice. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Okay. This is more of a people's <laughs> choice kind of thing. I'm I mean, it's got to be the so you looked that up on the internet. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's basically. Be the but I also like ask people on the internet, who's your favorite? What's your favorite sequel? That was one of the outstanding answers. Really? It's true. I'm trying to win. So well, that's the easiest way to win. <laughs> that is a good point. That's a good point. It is about winning, but it's a great movie. Uh, it's probably the second best Star Wars movie. Yeah. Which we can get into that in a whole nother. That's, that's a whole nother. We'll draft Star Wars yeah. movies one of these days. Yeah. <laughs> Two rounds. Well, just the three of us. Yeah, because yeah. there's enough. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, Dwayne, you're up. For your first pick, and then we'll go into your second pick after that. First pick, uh, my guy Dev in the comments said it. Ah! It's, yeah. it's aliens. There's no way it was going to make it all the way back it's to me. No chance. Yeah, I was taking that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> chance. Game over, man. Game Are you an aliens over. guy? No. No? no. You're right, missing well, out. There you go. You're missing out. <laughs> I had Space Invaders, though. Okay. Oh, that's a good movie. That's nah, a good movie. No, nah, it's a video game. Video yes. game. Come on. Dude, I was thinking of Spaceballs. <laughs> yeah, you were. Yeah, that's definitely. That's totally also, not a sequel. Also, not a not sequel. A sequel. <laughs> not a sequel. Have you ever heard of Atari? <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay. All right. I, I'm only 26. So like, He's I, a kid. I didn't even play that game. I didn't right. even know what Atari was. <laughs> I understand. I got you. Atari. Right. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Dwayne, second, p- second pick. First All pick right. of the second round. I'm going to go with one... Uh, Classic childhood movie, probably not on uh, the best of list, which I think is a crime, and it is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Oh, I've never seen an Indiana Jones movie. You know what's funny? Okay, so legendary sequel. I was listening to the rewatchables on the way back from dropping stuff off at Shields, and they were doing uh, Last Crusade, which chronologically is number one. But they were saying the Temple of Doom is the worst Indiana Jones, and I didn't agree. I, I totally think that's disagree. crazy. Temple of Doom is one of the coolest movies ever. Made. I, I wouldn't put it on my draft if I didn't believe 100% that it's not excellent. Mm. There are movies that you can look on the list online that I could have put in that space. But we all know what a great film <laughs> Temple of Doom is. I just realized if Greg was drafting only movies from the 80s, we just took all only of movies them. from the 80s ourselves. We just ripped the whole pool from him. He doesn't look pleased. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the one thing is like, I'm going 80s. We're like, we are too. <laughs> uh, great pick, Dwayne. Uh, what's your favorite part of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? Oh, man. Pulling that heart out. Has to like, be the heart, time. dude. Yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. It's I've, so sick. I've never seen an Indiana Jones movie. Oh so my I, oh, wait, God. wait, wait, wait. So I always Holy Ma. <laughs> so I always thought it was just like a running gag when they showed it on TV shows or cartoons and they talked about Indiana Jones. Yeah. I thought it was just kind of a running gag. I no. didn't know it was a real thing forever. Yeah. Rips the heart out. Yeah, I just thought like I'd never seen the movie, so I never thought it was this a real thing. It makes me so sad. For the youth. What is going on, dude? This is terrible. All right. Makes me sad for Yeah, you. yeah, make up for that. Whatever uh, you just said with I'm probably your gonna, second pick. I might lose it on this one, but I'm just doing it to keep the oh, vibes no. up, and I'm going too fast, too furious. Dang. Just for, just for the, I'm just, this is for Mitch more than anything that he loves he, the best. Dude, great. those movies rule. They're the best. It's the, oh, best, film. Great. It's the best film franchise ever made. Where I the car just jumps and like crashes into the boat. I watched Too Fast, Too Furious this week. I, again, I, it's, Mitch's, it's a good one. That's, probably, uh, where, that's probably ludic- second favorite that's, movie. That's series. both Ludacris and Tyree's. 
entrance into the Fast and Furious. That's universe. where that great scene is where they go into the garages and then like all the cars come out. Of cars oh, come it's out. so sick. Okay. Okay, man, a lot of my picks just came off the board. I'm up here. That was the you BF. can look it up on the internet. What are you no, doing? No, I have a I have a, lists. I have, yeah. I have lists. We need a shot clock. Uh, we're going really fast, oh, actually. We're God. going way faster than I thought. Oh, there's times oh, that we take okay. forever. Okay, <laughs> this one's easy. This one's easy. And I have a question for you. Why so serious? Yeah. Dark that's, Knight. That's an excellent choice. If I was Dark trying to Knight. win, that's the one I would have taken it, but I just wanted to get You just wanted to steal yeah, my picks. It's all you do when we draft. Yeah, that's literally the only reason I took that, because I wanted Dark Knight. Well, too bad. I get the Dark Knight. Uh, obviously, the best Batman movie ever made. Yeah. Are you a Keaton guy or a Christian Bale guy? No. No. Cool. All right. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> that was the right answer. I don't know if we chose the right game for Crook. <laughs> he already said he's not going to pick his favorite. He's already not going to pick his favorite child. That's true. So you can't you can't, so you can't pick your favorite Batman. Batman. That's a good yeah. point. They call him Crook. And for what about reason? you? Because you're of a generation where you saw the Keaton and. The Christian oh, man. So I, I just told you guy. old right No, there. I said of a generation. Fine. I've accepted my role at DMVR as, as The old. old guy, correct. Yeah, it's yeah. old. Yeah. Um, it's fine. Uh, it, I, it's, it's Christian Bale, I think. Uh, He's so good. He was a great Batman, but also great to make fun of. Right. You yeah. know? Like, Keaton is cool as hell, though. I can, Penny's never seen any of the Christian Bale Batman movies, but if I were to tell her to do the Batman voice... She would do that ridiculous Christian Bale, you know. Okay, I got it. Swear to me. <laughs> yeah, just that ridi- it's so goofy, but yeah. he was still he it's was still, still great. great. Scary Batman. Batman. Great point. All right, Crookham, you're up, my guy. You got back to back picks. Back to back, and then you're done. All right. I'm gonna go with Rocky too. Oh, oh that is no. such a That's good a heavy pick. Hitter. Literally, there, I was trying to think of sports sequels, and there's just not much outside of Rocky. Yeah, I think, you know, you still had Mick. Yeah. Which I think is really important to anything you do. Yeah. You have to have a crusty old guy, <laughs> which is what you guys are doing tonight. Yeah. You're welcome. Hanging yeah. out with a crusty, yeah. two crusty welcome. old guys. You're I was about to say, this way the show. Our quotas are <laughs> we overflowing. We are yeah. literally carrying you to. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. To greatness. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate that. Uh, is that your favorite Rocky movie? Um. Because for me, Rocky Four is my favorite movie. I like the first one. No, a lot. you got it. I think you got to go with the original. Okay, yeah. I mean that would be my second. So yeah, I mean, great. I mean, uh, probably the most underrated franchise. One of the most underrated franchises, in my opinion. Especially now that you had all the Creed. Have you seen any of the Creed movies? You said you haven't seen a movie since the '80s, so no, probably not. Probably not. underrated. I think it is. Rock. There's a damn statue. For yeah, but it's pretty properly these rated. These movies are <laughs> from a long time ago, and I don't think people understand how good they are. I don't think enough. Oh, you mean with with with, with, the, with the young yes. people? Yes, correct. Oh, okay. Rocky's one yeah. actually I watched. It's good. Okay. It's really good. Yeah. Wow, if yeah, right. I watched it, then you know it's a classic. I don't want to see that often. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know anything from before he was born, so that's a big deal. I truly do not. I wow. refuse to learn before the past. Do that's not repeat before it. Before the past. <laughs> oh okay. All right, Craig, wrap that us up with your final pick of the Fantastic attitude. <laughs> <laughs> You're going places, dude. My guy. <laughs> if I don't know it, I can repeat it. Nobody can tell me I wasn't first. Uh, <laughs> He's like, his, his next pick's going to be World War II. Uh, right? like, I think that happened. No, no, no. He doesn't know what that is. <laughs> it, was, Yo, it was before he was born. If you learned from the first one, we might as well have a second one. No, if I land on the moon, I can say I was the first person because I don't hilarious. know anything from the past. Uh, all right. All we'll right. wrap it up here with your so last pick. I'm going to go with my uh, theme with my other favorite child okay. of my own who's at the Air Force Academy and I'm going with the Top Gun movie. Oh, oh Top Gun Maverick! Cool. I didn't even think of that! I thought about it but I just haven't oh, seen it either. So my like, God. And, if, and if there's a trophy, you guys can just carry it out to that my car right now. That is such a good pick! <laughs> it's such a small trophy, Crickham. You can carry it oh in my God. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's a D-line It pick. is the perfect movie. I, Have you guys seen Maverick yet? I can't yeah. handle Tom Cruise. <laughs> What? I, I can do Tom Cruise. Right, you're, you're saying too much stuff, man. We're going to have to have a whole non-soccer pod soon. This is me. I can do your Tom. insanities. Top Gun Maverick is so good. It is. I've seen it, I think, four times now. That's insane. No. <laughs> it's perfect. 
Just saying no doesn't make it any less it, insane. This has just, nothing to do with movies, but I want to be your father figure now because I think we need to. <laughs> you need some mentorship. To be fair, my you dad was so, pretty on, crazy so you you for you, a long so time. So you don't go and see like Mission Impossible movies? Nope. Or what? Oh man! All right. We're, if I wanted Tom Cruise, I just joined Scientology. Oops, sorry, but then my two is a terrible one, so I don't know why anyone would pick it. Um, all right, I'm up. This movie. I believe still has a perfect score on Rotten Tomatoes. It is somehow both a prison movie and a children's movie. It has the most lovable little character you've ever seen in your whole life. Toy Story. No. I am taking Paddington 2. And that it was is such an internet look so up. So good. No, no, no. I <laughs> love Paddington. Great movie. Go see Patton 2. Even better. It has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I am not alone in this. I've never seen Paddington either. Well, yeah. you're lost because it's a great movie. I'm just laughing at Dev. Me and Hank are competing for the weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> we <are> just <laughs> <taking> <laughs> <some> <laughs> I could have stopped laughing. <laughs> Me and Hank have actually thought about starting a podcast. <laughs> I, no one would want to listen to it. They, everybody would weird. want to listen to it because it'd be stupid. It's too, they'd hate listen. Um, yeah, and we'd catch him that way. I can't believe. Am I the only one? You haven't even seen Paddington 2? No. No. Well, why not? You have an eight-year-old. It's perfect. No. What do you mean no? First of all, uh, I don't trust bears. Good. Uh, <laughs> never trust a bear. From deepest darkest Peru. Yeah, the whole like that's cute, what Paddington. The whole from. cute coat and hat thing. That's a trick. No, that's some cocaine he's perfect. In it no, that was no, the last what? time anybody on that movie was ever seen. They're all gone now. Yeah, cocaine bears is the real thing bears. too. Bears, bears beats the Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> you guys are wrong. That's a great movie. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, you're up. Your your last pick in the draft. I'm going Toy Story two. Great. It's a great pick. pick. It's a great movie. Yeah. I needed a. That was a surprisingly good pick. I love Toy Story. <laughs> Why do you always take good picks late and terrible picks first? Yo, I'm sorry. Empire Strikes Back is not a bad pick. No, I know. I'm just kidding. Too, too fast, too No, this is honestly the best draft I've ever seen you be a part of. No, I've won a couple of them. Oh, you did yeah. win the tailgate draft. I've won a couple of them. Don't, don't yeah. come at me sideways. Oh, Toy Story 2 is a great movie, man, where Jesse gets introduced, where they're on the plane. It's a good movie. That's two. No, For, Jesse's in three. No, that's in two. But that's where she gets introduced. Introduced. One is where Buzz gets introduced. Two Jesse's in three. No, I'm pretty sure Jesse's in two. I think you're wrong on this one. I might be wrong, but I won, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Take that, cook him. <laughs> oh. Listen, I don't care what you say. There's no Bombito in this draft. Hey! She makes her first appearance in two. Thank All right. you. I knew Thank that. You. Thank All right, fair enough. Uh, I'm walking Dwayne, off now. <laughs> I'm torn on this last one. Oh God. Nobody can uh, take your pick now, though. <laughs> I know. I know. So I do a go with a movie that I know Yaya hasn't seen. And a lot of, you the, can just a lot of the our movies. A lot of our young fans have not seen. Or do I go similar genre with something that I know our younger fans have seen that is also good? That's where I'm well, at. Well, we don't have a lot of time. Is so this phone uh, a friend or what? What yeah, are we, we going to pick? Just say the names and it's fine. Like, yeah. how, many, how many minutes do we have? Zero. Yeah, <laughs> two seconds. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to stick with the '80s. The '80s were the best decade for movies. Um, That's a lie. Well, you the weren't 80s around. Didn't even you exactly would, you so ever watched any happen. movies from the '80s? You don't. I watched know. Rocky. Uh, I, I was going to say Captain America: Winter Soldier, which is an excellent sequel, but I'm going to go to my '80s childhood superheroes and go with a movie that legit for critical acclaim. The Tick. No. <laughs> Superman 2. Yeah. That movie, well, a lot well, of people will be Captain like, America. Eh, well, see, that's the thing. I knew the young yeah. people wouldn't get it. But <laughs> this movie was critically acclaimed. Sure. And if you grew up in the 80s, like, you know this movie. You know the bad guys. You know the little floating prism. Did you see it? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know the little floating prism and, and all that. It was a defining... You have Christopher Reeve, who just upstanding like the best superman ever uh and, and it, i think no no superman movie will ever be as good as superman 2 have you seen superman versus batman yeah it was terrible yeah i was about to say yeah. not better than superman 2 yeah, probably terrible superman mm. 2 is great you should watch it no go back into history it didn't even happen <laughs> it's not a real thing uh 
the Superman, Superman too. movies are. It's weird looking at any pre uh, like Marvel takeover superhero movies. Yep. Just because of how much they changed. Well, because Marvel took superheroes and made them cool, and, and no, and made them like upset that they were superheroes, which is like the silliest thing ever. Every, well, that's not what I every was Marvel say, hero, other than maybe like Cap, but well, even Cap has it. Sometimes. I just mean in terms is they're of all sad CGI. that they have of these extraordinary the universe, powers. It's they're not grumpy. necessarily episodic, right? Because they're telling a, a larger scale picture. So going back to it, to the Superman trilogy specifically that you're speaking of is there's a it's all contained in that hour and a half universe of that kind movie, of. right? It's no, there, there's three Superman movies. There are there? three Superman movies, but I'm saying when they these older superhero movies, it was introduce the superhero, introduce the villain, fight the villain, win, end of movie. And there's uh, and Marvel has sort of changed that now in terms of how we consume those old superhero movies. It's not the same, and those were probably well, it's the money machine versus the story. Sure. You know, I just Marvel think it's is more of a yeah. Now no, I, I really want to do worst I like movies the Marvel draft. Movies too. I would love to do that. I'm taking um, Superman two as my first. Okay, <laughs> that's gonna do it for the R two sequels <laughs> movie draft. If you hate Yaya's takes, it is at Yahir Vasquez. Yaya on had a Twitter. good one at the end. He did have a very good draft this time though. So I've had there. one bad draft, and it one. was. Terrible. Yeah, and that uh, has like my stock. My <laughs> stock has like dropped. You considerably. may never You've recover. Been branded um, yeah, from that. As per usual, when we have a game coming up on Saturday, we like to go around and make our predictions. You can abstain if you want. I will definitely abstain. There you go. No, he uh, cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne, you are up. What do you see happening on Saturday? We got Galaxy at home. Uh, one to one. One one. <laughs> oh my god! I'll say who scores Rubio, our guy. I think he'll be the difference. You think he's back? I, I mean, he was on the bench yesterday, but he the was game on the bench. Played, so I think he might come in in the last ten minutes and just be a complete game changer, like the way he is. Who's scoring for you? Cabral. I'm gonna go. No, I'm I'm gonna go Bombido, man. Oh, like he's due. Like he's due, man. We he's, we are. All converted to the Church of Bombi of this All podcast. Right. God, he's awesome. He's so uh, good. That Bombi toe. Man, I hope that happens. I will lose my mind. Uh, I will literally, I'm just going to go out of the press box, down to the concourse, <laughs> freak out for a couple minutes, and then go back then up. Go back up. <laughs> hey, guys, I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be here. Okay, hold on a sec. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to go to nothing. Rapids. Love it. I like that. Lewis. Okay. Maybe his last goal as a member of the Rapids. We were going to get into that, but we, you know, too much, not enough time. Uh, rumors to England. So maybe he gets a nice little capper on his Rapids career with a nice clutch goal. And Keegan gets the rocket that the oh, internet man. is begging for. We need it. He's due. Last year when Keegan scored that rocket, I took off my Against shirt. San Jose? I was, yeah. I, I oh, was at my house. I took off my that shirt. That was the goal of the year. I was completely psyched. I was looking at it and yelling at people to look at Did it. Did you guys see that Jose Martinez rocket? I was rocket? just about oh, to ask oh, that. Oh, Holy oh, smokes. A ball, shot. a ball is not meant to yeah, move that way. balls don't move like that. They're just not supposed to. That was a great That's strike. That's goal of the year. It was cool. It was cool as hell. Until Keegan's, Until Keegan's rocket, rocket <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> Crooker, man, thank you. Thank you for coming of by course. again. Of course. He might Hopefully never come back. I get back. invited back. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, you're definitely invited Depends back. I want you to roast uh, Yaya more on, on air. It's hilarious. I do need to be humbled <laughs> a little bit. Like, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to bring him along a little bit. Absolutely. Just things oh, that we've got to, you're, yeah. you're, I am not a Rapids 2 player. I'm not Padawan, moving fast enough for you. Padawan Jedi situation here. Speaking okay. of Empire. Uh, we have where can people find you? Too, so we'll be fine. <laughs> where, where do you want to direct people towards to uh, consume? <laughs> Probably in my office at Dick's Sporting Goods sure. Park 24 hours a day. No, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you want some really good insights about once a month, I'll tweet once here and there at, at Brian Crookham. Okay. If that's what you want. You're also on the radio call with Connor Oh, Cape. I am. Yeah. Uh, Altitude Radio. Altitude Radio. Yeah. For, for Home and Away. And if you're watching Altitude the... AltitudeSportsRadio.com. AltitudeSportsRadio.com. Yeah. And if you're watching a home game... On Apple TV. There's a little swirly thing at the bottom. little swirly thing. You click on that. Click the swirly. Home broadcast. Home broadcast. You can listen to Cape and Crookham. Uh, what a duo. Uh, don't tell Cape I said that, though. Um, 
I'm sure he's not listening. We're right bleeping now, so. it out of the show. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to go into his head. Cave's still saying? crabby from being up late last night and not even calling a game. So <laughs> I, bet, I bet he was <laughs> very stoked about that. Did he get a sleep in at least? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Uh, yeah. uh, plug us out of here, fellas. Uh, DNV underscore Rapids on Twitter. Follow us there for all the great things. The lights are starting to hit me really hard for whatever reason. You yeah. need some uh, shady rays, baby. I do, dude, I, they're upstairs. I forgot them. <laughs> but I do look drunk when I wear them, unfortunately. <laughs> um, <laughs> DNV underscore Rapids, wherever you listen to them, give us a like on, uh, on this video, please. Five star review wherever you hear us. Uh, Dwayne, finish it off because these <laughs> lights are killing me for whatever reason right now. <laughs> Oh, man. Jump into dmvrlocker.com. Uh, Thank you. If you are excited about the Nuggets like we are and then want to celebrate that championship, there are some incredible shirt designs. I'm wearing one right now. I There's just dropped right off there. 250 of these at the Shields up in Johnstown if yeah. you're a NOCO listener. If you're a collector, um, there's a great book out, too called the golden era um put out by dmvr and that, our dmvr squad that is at costco is it barnes and noble tattered cover walgreens cvs circle k and online and if it you is, come to the bar you might get it signed by all the authors maybe yeah swing by if um, you want to get it signed and, and find the nuggets crew yeah so now's a great time to stock up on all of your nuggets celebratory yep. championship action uh, if you are into trading cards, sports memorabilia, et cetera, there is the All Cards Weekend Show out at Crown Plaza by the airport. Um, uh, Friday from 4 to 8, Saturday from 10 to 6, Sunday 11 to 5. Me, my guy Riley in the merch department, we will be there selling shirts, talking about DNVR, hanging out, maybe buying some Jokic cards maybe. Who knows? We'll see, we'll see if we have enough time. Uh, but come Find check me us a out. Rubio one or a Moist, and I would love that. I ho- I don't know. Is MLS do cards? I honestly have no idea. Yeah, they do yeah. cards. Of cool. Yeah. I want a Moist card, dude. Yeah. That's a uh, Bombito. <laughs> moist card. Um, other also, than that, wait. No. Also, uh, no. Hey, if you're into NBA draft and you want to see what the Nuggets are cooking, um, cooking like cook our, we're cooking like crook em. Hey. Cook em. Say that five times. Cooking <laughs> like crook <'em. laughs> After an uh, illegal Pete's happy Yeah, we got our live show tonight. It starts <laughs> yeah. at the start of the draft I at can't six. say that with you, even without they illegal They will be Pete's, going, honestly. Alyssa, is it all the way through the end of the draft? <laughs> but it's long. It's well into the past the first round. The, the Nuggets, the Nuggets are picking, traded up. Yeah, they're picking at yeah. 29, 32, and 37. A um, lot of interesting stuff there. Uh, I'm a big draft nerd, so I'm very excited about Watch late first, NBA. early second round picks. I love that stuff. Watch the NBA uh, all scramble to try to deal with Jokic. Correct. It's hilarious. It, Some weird trades happen today, but we're not an NBA yeah. pod. Get your <laughs> subscription. Become a diehard member at thednvr.com. Like and subscribe on YouTube. And more important than all of that and how we end every single show, baby, up the pits. <laughs>